Hello everybody, Jeff here again. I want to talk to you about how to use Lightroom to display images to your customers. So if you're face to face with them, either in a situation where you are doing a individual portrait session or for example in the case of my old time portrait studio, we show the customer all the photos that we've taken of them for them to choose which one they would like in print form. So I want to go over some of the things that Lightroom has um, that you can use as, as uh, display techniques with your customers. Uh, I, I grabbed some uh, images from a, an old photo shoot that I did in Vegas and uh, at a convention once. Um, this was actually in Nelson, not in Las Vegas itself, but Nelson, which is south east of Vegas away, is a great little place. Um, all kinds of fun places to shoot. Um, so uh, I'm going to jump right in. Several ways. This is uh, in the library module considered the grid view. So if you hit G, you'll get to this view from anywhere in Photoshop or within Lightroom. Uh, if you want to just show these by hitting the E key, it will bring up this. You can also, I'm going to hit G and then go back. If you double click on the image, you get the same idea. This readout information is uh, available by clicking the I button, the I key rather. I guess it's not a button, but the I key. Um, I like having this up uh, because I know what photo number it was. Um, you also have the photo number right here down on the screen um, based on the one that's highlighted. Um, you can use the arrow keys to navigate through them. So the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate between um, and you can see it changing there on the bottom of the screen. You can also use the uh, the mouse of course. So um, one of the things that I do here um, separate from my studio is I like to have these wings on the side. Um, some people don't. At our studio we do it this way so there's more focus on just the image itself. Um, another thing if you don't want to be able to see this if you hit the F key which is full screen it takes it up to that full level and then you can use the arrow keys to navigate through them. Um, this seems a little blind potentially, but it does give you a nice full screen image um, of each photo um, and allows them to really see the picture, you know, without any other distractions on the screen. Obviously, with a big screen, this looks better. Um, now, one of the problems is this is bigger than the print that they're actually going to receive if you don't print larger than 11 by 14. So, um, one of the things you can do, um, and this is something we do in the studio, I'm going to hit the E key and go back um, and hit the tab key again and get my wings back. But one of the things you can do is while you are in any of these modes, you can hit the one through five key and it will set a rating to the image itself. Sorry, it's actually zero through five. Zero will take all of the stars away. If I hit the one, you see set rating to one, and a star appears down here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you, anywhere between zero and five, zero will remove it, one through five. Now, we do this at the studio because if you are back hitting the F key, if you are in here, the ratings can be set on the fly, and you're listening to what your customers are saying about an individual image. Then you go back. And if they rated three of them fives, you can go back and show them these are the ones that you rated the highest. Um, in this case, I'm going to take off these. Um, the next thing I want to show you is, is it's called survey mode. I'm not quite sure. I'm sure there's some correlation to some photo somewhere, but um, it's by hitting the N key and it will pull up the three that I have selected here and show them on the screen together. Now you see that it just makes them they're not full screen so they're they're, they're uh, you have to be careful on using this because you have 
only a limited amount of screen. So this is where I will tend to get rid of the wings by hitting the tab key. Um, if they're vertical, it actually works quite nicely because you can fit several, and I apologize, this, I don't have three of this particular set, but that's about full size, um, like a 5x7 for example. So if you're selling 5x7s, you're giving them a good representation of what full size would be on the screen. The nice thing with survey is I can say, well, I don't like this one. So now it's just down to these two. Unfortunately, in survey mode, you cannot zoom into the image. You can choose one image and then you can zoom in on that image, but you cannot zoom in on two images at the same time together. And the beauty of the other thing that I want to show you, the last thing that I want to show you here, is something called compare. You can take two images. I've selected these two images. And if I hit the C key, it goes into compare mode. Now, one thing you've got to be careful of with compare mode, these little diamonds in the corner of the images the white one represents the left hand side and the black one represents the right hand side. Select and candidate. I say this to you because depending on how and where you click on either the image or the border of the image down below, it changes the orientation of which photo is on which side. So if I click on this photo, the image portion in the thumbnail, it moves the white. I can move it over here. Now what happened is this photo is actually later in the series than the photo on the right. So you have to make sure when you're communicating with your customer that you understand this, that this is actually a previous photo to this one on the left. Normally we read in America left to right, so I want to bring that to your attention. Now, if I click on the border, it takes the first the image that I'm clicking on and the next image. So wherever I click on this, you can see that it's moving and it put the left hand one here or the previous with the white and the black. But if I click on the image itself, so Take some time going to compare and play with that. But what I really wanted to show you with this and the power of this uh, of this tool is this. If I grab these two images, let's grab these two because they're more similar. He's kind of looking off to the left here. He's kind of got a, maybe a little bit of a goofy face. She's got a smile. Uh, her hand is a little blurry because of shutter speed. But let's say I can't see all that stuff let's pick this one and let's go here alright well I want to be able to see just their faces the beauty of compare is that if I click it zooms in and if they are relatively in the same place in the frame I can directly compare them now with my port the old time portrait studio we have a situation like this we have this situation where I want to actually zoom in and see an individual face. Now, these are the same image, so if they look similar, that's because they are. They're actually the same one. What I did was take this out of the corner. But this is the kind of advantage that you can get if you're doing portraits. I can look at just her face or just his face um, where you have a predominance of where you have a predominance of a single character in a certain range. Like this, for example, we lit the front of this truck. This is all lit. These are two different images. So we can look at this and say, what's different? What's better? Do I like his look better in one versus another? That's the beauty of compare. You can really get in and see, compare this image, which here it's hard to see, and this image. But if I click and compare, I can look and say, uh, 
yep, I actually like this one on the right better, and we can proceed from there. So hopefully these are some helpful tips in how to display to your customers. Um, it helps you kind of call through them very quickly with a customer and, and uh, narrow down more quickly uh, the images that you want to print. Hope all that made sense. I will catch you guys in the next video. This is Jeff at Instamage. See you again soon.